Good morning. Well, it is great to see uh, everyone here this morning. We have several guests with us this morning. Um, some of you have, have, are visiting with us out of, out of choice. Some of you are out of more necessity uh, this morning. But we're, regardless of, uh, of what the uh, reason is that brought you here, we pray that our purpose and our goal and our function here today is to praise and to honor God and nothing, nothing more or less. So um, I want to tell you, last week I, I mentioned some of our, our fellowship groups and I, I didn't mention our young families group that is headed up by Matt and Julie Church. Now, that, that group hasn't got started very good yet because about the time, like all the rest of the groups, when it started, um, everything got, kind of got shut down. So they haven't really gotten off the ground yet, but there are some things in the works for that. So uh, that's exciting. We have a seniors group that... Uh, had had some plans made. Uh, Tom Johnson and Howard Bradley were in, in uh, kind of uh, leading that group. Due to circumstances beyond their control, they've not been able to do anything yet, uh, but hopefully we are going to be able to get that started soon. And we'd really like for somebody to, to step up and help them in that because both of them have a very full plate in their personal lives right now. And it would be very nice if we had someone that would that could step up and help with the seniors group. We also have, y'all, we have some things coming up that I'm so excited about. I can't go into any details right now because it's just in the formative stages, but we've got some things coming up that are gonna be so good that I, I just, I'm so excited about getting them started and, and getting involved in that and really getting those going because it's going to be, I, I believe, it's going to be a, a, a real blessing to this congregation as a whole and as individuals. And so I want to ask you to be praying about the, um, the revisiting and the, the emerging from the ashes, our fellowship groups that kind of, got, uh, kind of got squelched during the shutdown. But we've got some things going on and coming up that are going to be just really, really good. So we hope that uh, you'll be involved in some of that. It's going to be more opportunities to be together, uh, more opportunities to get to know each other better, to develop more love for each other, and to be uh, more of the family that we need to be uh, as, as the members here at, at Camelback. So be praying about that and thinking about that as more and more of that is unveiled in the, in the coming weeks. Now, none of you that I know of ever met my dad. I don't know that, it, that he, he died in 2014, um, about a, a month or so, actually a couple of weeks before our first visit here in 2014. So I don't think anybody here ever met my dad. But I can tell you that I have a lot of his characteristics. I'm a lot like my dad was. When you called on the phone, you couldn't tell if it was him or me because our voices were so similar. I have a lot of his physical characteristics. I, I look a lot like my dad. Now, he was a, a much larger man than I am, a couple inches taller and several pounds heavier. But I look a lot like my dad. So a, a lot of, and, and I walk like my dad. I mean, it's just there's so many things, and many of you can say about your, one of your parents that you have these characteristics of your parents. And I'll tell you something else about my dad, too. He was the stubbornest man on earth. I got that from him, too. He was loyal. Oh, man, was he loyal. He would not let you down for anything. He would do everything in his power. If he said he was going to do something, he would do everything in his power to make that happen. He was as honest as a person could be, sometimes more honest than you wanted him to be. So sometimes you've heard the, the term brutally honest. He was a brutally honest person. You never had to wonder what he was thinking. You never had to wonder what was on his mind. He was, he was just going to tell you. He absolutely loved the Lord with all his heart. And wanted nothing more 
than when he left this earth to be at the foot of the throne of God for eternity. So I'm a lot like my dad in that respect. And my dad never looked for a confrontation. He was a very non-confrontational person. He didn't like confrontation. He didn't go out looking for it. I'm going to tell you something. If confrontation ever marched up to him, he was not going to back down. Then when there weren't many people who wanted to confront him. He didn't look for it, but he didn't back down from it if it found him. And he loved my mom, and he loved his kids. He loved his family. You know, he was just one of those guys that, that you, I just want to be like him. I remember when I was just a little bitty, and we would walk from the house to the barn, and he'd be carrying buckets of, of water up to water the dogs. We had 120 dogs. We raised dogs as a business. We had 120 at one time. And I remember walking in the snow, and he had a stride as long as a pickup truck. And I can remember walking behind him, trying to put my feet in the spots where his feet had hit because I wanted to, I wanted to be like my dad. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something about him. He was an imperfect man. He was an imperfect father. But I hope that I got the good things from him because he put part of himself into me. Part of who I am is because of who he was. And so when we look at this, this idea then that if you look back at Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God says to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, he says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And let's give him dominion over the earth. And he's going to be like us. And then you get to chapter 2, verse 7, where God formed Adam. And we've talked about this. And I'll, you'll hear me, you'll probably get weary of hearing me talk about this moment. But when God formed man out of the dust, and he's just a being, but then God breathed some of himself into that form and gave it life. Now, look, God says, let's make man our image. Let's put part of us into him. Let us breathe life into him. And now the life we have, the life we enjoy, is because of what God has put into us of himself. And so when we look at how we should respond as children and how we should think about God our Father, and I appreciate Russell's comment so much because I do the same thing. I walk outside sometimes and I look up, I think, Goodness gracious. This, this is enormous. This is just enormous. And yet God, my Father, loves me and knows me and cares about me. He cares about the things that worry me. He cares about the things I'm concerned about. He cares and he knows even though he's responsible for all of this. Y'all, that is remarkable. Remarkable. I don't know how many of you all have seen some of those videos, but I've got one called The Created Cosmos. I've showed it here on a Sunday night. It is incredible. The universe is incredible. And y'all, we are, we, are, we are the tiniest little, tiniest little speck in the universe. And on that tiny little speck, I am a tiny little speck. And yet my father has put part of himself into me. Our Father has put part of himself into you. And because of that, we're important to him. We matter to him. And if you look from the very beginning to the very end, this is God saying, I love you so much. I created you because I, I, I need an object for my affection and I'm pouring all my affection out on you. This is why you're here, because I love you so much. You are my child. Now, as a parent, has your child ever disappointed you? <laughs> well, I'm seeing a couple parents go. Some of us have been disappointed by our kids. It happens. I know... Y'all, there have been many, many times that I have disappointed my father. I know that. 
and yet his love never wavers. His desire to be with us and his desire for us to be with him never wavers. No matter how badly we disappoint him, his love never changes. And you know, when I look back on, we talked about in class this morning some of the decisions we've made throughout our lives. I look back on some of those decisions and I'm thankful that God's love is so steadfast. Because if it wasn't, he's had plenty of opportunities to say, all right, you and I are done. If that's the way you're going to act, you're on your own. But listen, church, my God doesn't do that. Years ago, a sermon was preached. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Y'all familiar familiar with that sermon? And I always picture this scene of here I am. I'm dangling over the fires of hell by a thread, barely hanging on. And I think, and God is just sitting here with his scissors of righteousness around my thread, just waiting, just waiting for me to mess up. He goes, and snip my thread. But you know what? That is such a, that is such a bad picture of our God. You know what? Our God is, he's not sitting there with his scissors like this. He's sitting there with his hands like this because he knows we're going to cut our own thread. He knows that we're going to do that. So he's sitting there with his arms wide open waiting to catch us and save us from that punishment, not waiting to condemn us to that punishment. Otherwise, what does, what does it mean when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus? And he said, for God so loved the world, and you all know the rest, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. God did not send His Son to the world to condemn the world, but through Him the world might be saved. Hallelujah that God is not sitting there with His righteous scissors waiting to cut my thread and send me to hell. He knows I'm going there anyway if He doesn't do something, and so He did something. He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross. And why did he do that? The verse tells us, because he loves us so much. Y'all, there, there is no greater message on earth than to know that God loves us like that and is not wanting to condemn us, but wanting to save us. It's amazing. When day after day I disappoint my father and he says, no matter what, I still love you. I still want you to be with me for eternity. And he's put part of himself into us to prove that in Romans 8. He says the Spirit of God dwells in us. You hear that? The Spirit of God dwells in us. His Spirit dwells inside us. I wish I deserved to have His Spirit dwelling inside me. I wish I could say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm so important to God. I'm so good that he put his spirit in me and I'm, I'm just that special. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'm not that special. We are not, in the whole big scheme of things, we are not that special. What makes us special is the fact that God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. That's what makes us special. And then I, I gotta, I gotta read this to you. This is this is the great. Um, this is was wonderful. By the way, let me let me have a side note right here. I didn't last week. I did not announce the scripture I was using, and I told you, you should know this, or you should be able to look it up and find it. You know, that was a big that was a big presumption on my part. And I apologize for that. Revelation four and five. If you were wondering, if you hadn't looked it up, if you, had, if you didn't know, go and read that for yourselves. Be amazed at this scene of heaven, of how glorifying it is, how wonderful it is at the foot of the throne. So I, I didn't tell you last week on purpose, and, uh, but I'm going to tell you right now we're in Romans 5. I want you to listen close to what this said. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. You can. It's up to you. But listen closely. Therefore, beginning in verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, 
We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now listen to verse 5 here, y'all. This is, this is incredible. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Did you hear what that said? The love of God has been poured out into our hearts. Okay, that doesn't say that, that, the, that God gave us a smidge. It, it wasn't, that's not a, a splash. It's not a pinch. It's not a dash. It's not a sprinkle. It says the love of God has been poured out. Just envision that. Think about that scene. It's not that God's, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some love because through the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you that. I'm going to put some love in your heart. It says the love of God has been poured out. And I can just, I just I can imagine this scene and, and imagine what it looks like when God is pouring his, his love into us. It's, it's just like it's over and over. It's a continual flow of this love that God is pouring into us. And I'm thankful for that. Just like the blood of Jesus that continues to flow and flow and cleanse me from all sin, cleanse us all from all sin and all unrighteousness. Day after day after day, it's poured out on our behalf. See, God doesn't love us just a trickle. He doesn't love us just a dash, just, just a pinch. God loves us with everything he has. He loves us with everything he is. And he can't help it. That's his nature. That is who God is. He loves us that much. Listen now. He's been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, yeah, I'll stop right there just a minute. I was going to keep reading, but I just, that, that moment right there. Christ died for the ungodly. Y'all yeah, think about this, this verse in John where it says, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because look, God had one son. One. We were not his children. Jesus is his son. And he says that God loves us so much, love the ungodly so much that he was willing to let his one son die so that we could receive adoption. Think, do you ever, has that ever, you ever thought about that? You ever really considered that? God gave up his one, his only begotten son so that he could adopt the ungodly, many of whom would say, so... Now, I, I, I'm just going to be honest. I don't love people that much. Can I just, I'm just going to get right down to it. I don't love people that much where I would sacrifice my own son, my one and only son. I would not sacrifice him, especially for people who'd say, well, who cares? Would you do that? Those of you who are parents, think about your child or children. Think about it. Would you send them out to die for people who absolutely did not care? And when God says that, that and when Jesus says, I, I want you to love people like I love you. This is how they're going to know you're my disciples, if you love one another. And the new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. When Jesus himself 
went to the cross and died knowing that people wouldn't care. And he says, that's the kind of love you need to have. And y'all, I don't. I don't. You know, God does. Isn't that fantastic? God does. Without that love, there'd be no hope. And I'm so glad that hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. And you know, we, we, can't have a, we can't have a discussion of the love of God without going to 1 John. Just, just listen, okay? Just, just listen. These are not my words. These are the words of the Holy Spirit through John. Just listen to what he said. Beginning in verse 7 of chapter 4, 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. You hear those words? If this is the way that God loved us, then we should love one another. When I think about what it must have felt like for God to see His Son on the cross, for people to walk by shaking their heads and making fun, saying, yeah, you said that you are God. If you are really who you say you are, you come down from there and we'll believe you. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I would have done? I'd have called down 10,000 angels. And I would have showed those people who was boss. That's what I'd have done. But that wouldn't have fulfilled the purpose. That wouldn't have sealed the promise. That wouldn't have bridged the gap. You know, this gap that we build with our own sins. We create the gap. The blood of Christ bridges the gap. It changes everything. Gives us access to God through faith that we would not have otherwise. The blood of Christ brings us into the presence of God and makes us His children. And he did it because he loves us. Now, I, I, I am, uh, over the course of the past few weeks, I have been praying very, very hard that God would help me love the way I need to love. Forgive the way I need to forgive. Bless the way I need to bless to have compassion the way I need to have compassion. And you know, I'm, I'm praying that for all of us. I'm praying for me especially because I, <laughs> there are some areas that mm, I really need to do better on. Them. But I'm praying for all of us. I want us all to be the kind of people that look at that and say, wow, God has poured out His love 
into my heart. What an amazing thing that is to have the love of God pouring over us every day. The love of God, His forgiveness, His mercy, His grace, all those things that bring us into relationship with Him because, like I said, from start to finish, God says, I love you and I want you to be with me. The blood of Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness is available to all of us. It's available to cleanse us. It's available to change our lives if we're willing to be buried in it. So if you haven't done that, I encourage you to because without that, you are still an alien, a foreigner with no hope in the world. You know, that sounds harsh. It sounds harsh, but those are not my words. Those are the Holy Spirit's words. If you need to be cleansed, if you need to renew your relationship with God, whatever your case might be, let us know as we stand and sing.